any outstanding checks that have not been cut by an election, they have a demand war. And you're saying, okay, this is being taken care of. We want that in here. So put your demand warrant in a lower section for any outstanding checks. When the checking account comes up, that's where you put that. Okay? Put the total and all the information there. Because what you want to do is you want to get every month a full picture of what exactly funds you have. So that when the board sees it and they want to do something with those funds, you have a realistic picture of what's going on. Uh, let's see. In B, you're going to keep, you're going to total all that stuff up, and you're going to have a subtotal. And then in section C, this is where the treasurer, the second signatory, the board members, the officers are going to have to really use their heads. And this is true not just here, but in every single neighborhood council. Because we, we need to project what is your rent, what is your lease. Do you have any contractual services coming up? Like, are you using translators on a monthly basis? Uh, any large purchases or any neighborhood purpose rents that are in process? You've got to include this in the picture, okay? Temporary staffing services, again, that's the translating without coming in, or someone who is taking the minutes. Okay. Uh, storage facilities, if you're paying for rental and storage facilities, you want to make sure that you're covering the entire year's amount so that you put that in these, in these cells and you can total it all up and say, okay, these are what our expenditures and commitments are, and then um, use tax, any credits or additional fees, we will, done, will actually provide that for you. And then uh, what your approved budget is, is going to be your, what you have decided what it is. Of course, you can have 37000 to start with, so that's pretty much it. And then you find out what you have left over for your year. Many, I mean, this comes down to how do you run your family budget. If you don't project summer vacation and you want to go to Hawaii but you're not saving any money for it, what, where does it go? <laughs> Credit card. <laughs> That's my All right, the uh, last page is, what is the last page? Notice, the last page is on the back. Okay. The first section at the top is, it's not available yet. It has to do with the uh, actual checking accounts and all that stuff, so that's not available just yet. Um, the bottom section, again, has to do with the treasurer and the signatures, and then everybody understands where this is. Uh, and that uh, when you send this to us and provide it to us, then uh, the signatures are complete. And we will say, okay, this is your, your input for your monthly expense. Right, but we're also, what we want you to do is, 
keep that in front of you so that here is your yearly amount that you've already got obligated. Correct. And that's subtracted from your yearly budget. I understand the mechanics of that. What confuses me is the monthly report where you said you have to put down the 12000 every month. Was that just in the yearly report? I mean, that's how I read you. That's a good question. I will have to, I'll, I'll get back to you on this. And I'll send it to your president. Thank you. Great question. When I was sitting here talking to Armando, I said, I didn't take that question. I thought about it. Did I take it out? You don't think that was a treasure to me? No, you don't know me. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a question.
You're not altering a path to renewal. You're just shutting us down. And the fact here that you're saying this in front of the community, it's really disappointing that the department is not offering remedy for reconciliation of issues, getting back to where we could be a, a, a vibrant, fully operational board, okay? This is not the way it should be. Talking to council for council members, if we had issues, I would go to council for council members and ask them for peer mentoring on the issues that the department's holding against us here. But the fact is, they employees also have the responsibility to work with the neighborhood council to reconcile these issues so these community members are not left out in the public.
unfortunate that we are in this situation and that now we only have access for funds for an election. Our community is in need of programs and resources and we, this board has a lot of funds to have just been lost pretty much. So I think this board does need to move forward and do whatever is necessary so that this does not happen again. And if we see an, an individual uh, board member who is not making progress and as a board, we need to make sure that what needs to be done gets done. Bank on Yoli's uh, statement, I agree with her a whole hundred percent. I want to salute you, our field rep, for done for this neighborhood council and the other ones that you do, and the new kid on the block there for doing your excellent job. I'm glad I was not clear and foggy about a lot of issues. Now that you took the time and effort to read this to all of us and look at how many stakeholders we have. I really want to salute you for going out of your way and working real hard along with the staff that can't come to these meetings to done their job. What I see now is falls on us, on the LA32 Neighborhood Council and the board members and the uh, committee chairs. I'm one of the committee chairs. Okay, falls on us if we have to bring the treasurer report regarding money that concerns any of the committee. Maybe we have it or something that's kind of tied up his hand, but it still falls on the treasurer. Because it's on his watch or her watch, in this case it's a he, you know, to make sure that the committee chairs turn in the paperwork that he has to have to comply with you. He cannot comply with you being done unless we comply with him so he can comply. So it still falls on the treasurer's uh, watch, you know, and that's where the problem is. Didn't some of these issues with uh, funding um, come about from the previous uh, board treasurer, yeah. right? And that previous board treasurer failed to submit certain protocols for funding that were not submitted, right? I mean, so, and then when the new treasurer took, took power, um, he had a hard time gaining some of those materials from the previous treasurer. So basically we were stuck in the conundrum. So, I mean, regardless of, of our treasurer's uh, performance, he can't coerce a previous uh, a treasurer to to do and complete their job. Because if they don't complete their job, then they're failing to turn the paperwork to you and to him. Then it puts us in, you know, and then you're blaming, you're holding us accountable. And I understand why you would hold us accountable for a previous treasurer's non-filing, but the point is, you got to look. You got to take that into account. Right. You know, you can't like hold him responsible for the deeds of a previous treasurer who failed to do or not to do whatever they were going to buy. That's not fair. So I just want to make that point clear. And, and, and thank you for that. And, and just you know, here's the thing that obviously, it, you know, and steps moving forward, you know, hopefully there's there's a much clearer transition of of when the funding books are given to a new treasurer, right? When they go from one treasurer to another. You're absolutely right. This fiscal year, the first quarters that were not submitted were for the fiscal year 2012-2013. However, because we know that neighborhood councils don't always have the most transparent and clear transition, we work as much as possible with the treasurer to ensure that as much documentation is submitted as possible. This board approved board resolution stating we cannot locate these receipts, and we accept them. So regardless of whether, and I get it, it's frustrating, of whether the transition was easy or transparent or smooth or not, it is still the neighborhood council's responsibility to assure that public money is accounted for. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. One last thought. Thank you very much for your candor. I mean, this is great to see the happening. And know that everybody in the Dunn office, I am incredibly impressed. They want this to succeed. There are 95 groups out there. There's only maybe 25 of us inside the office. To multiply that times how many receipts come in, you get a picture of how many we get over with. But we want this to succeed. Thank you. 
starting Monday next week is any this goes this is this goes back to previous board purchase pit items okay and I'm gonna put this out there uh, regarding certain equipment like radio that was purchased during the last board okay and issues and equipment first of all next week I'd like to make a visit to the public store to categorize category to a catalog everything in the public storage. Second, if there's any equipment that's been purchased by this body that's in possession of individuals, for example, I have a computer bag and a computer laptop and I belong to the lap to the to the board, we need to note those items and their current and their current uh, and the current person who is responsible for. But most important, I'm gonna need a couple people if we have items that are bulky that we need to transport and put in storage, and in storage is not large enough to handle those items, i.e., say a barbecue, then we're going to have to make accommodations in order to properly secure those items. What I would like to do is, oh, yes, Mr. Regarding this item, there was an issue I was aware last month regarding the dog waste disposal that the previous board member, I believe, was RJ.
event directly there. So our funding staff followed up with public storage. Well, actually, Mr. Manzano followed up with public storage, put them in contact with our funding staff, and he was able to explain to them, this is a neighborhood council, it's a city entity. The, pro the payment process is different. We don't just issue payment. It has to go through the controller and be approved and all this other stuff. And so they were under the, they, they, were, they understood at that point. Recently, they called our offices again to let us know that in order, because I, I, I don't know, Mr. Mark, did you call to change the address? Uh, Is that what? I'm requesting the funding for the judge. Right. So he, he, I followed up with Mr. Montana and said, you have to call public storage, change the address. They didn't allow him to do that because he did not set up the account. So now they're calling our office. It's a, it's a mess, and I apologize, but now it's a, a back and forth between our department and public storage. Do you have a copy of that letter? Yes, I, I just emailed it to you right now. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, I don't get my city email. Okay, okay. for my sanity, so I... <laughs>